That's nice. I'm down by the river now and just flittering around these little hawthorn bushes here is Britain's national bird, believe it or not, is the robin. But for a small bird like a robin, time is really precious because, well, the days aren't that long. So they need to spend all that time, you know, all that eight hour day foraging, looking for food constantly. Because otherwise, if you don't get enough food in one day, then that could be enough to finish you off, right? If you go to bed with an empty stomach, you may not be able to survive the night. Wow, well that is a surprise. Just on the river bank there, flying in amongst the hawthorn bushes is a bird which I'm not entirely sure what species it is. It's in between two. There are two species of tit in this country which are virtually identical. In fact, I think even an expert ornithologist would be a wouldn't be able to distinguish them just by looking at um, just by looking at them. They're the willow tit and the marsh tit. Now my guess in this situation would be the willow tit, because that's slightly more common. But I wouldn't know for sure without um, listening for their calls. They look a little bit like a coal tit, which is our smallest species of tit. Um, but instead of having a white nape patch, they have a completely black cap and grey body. We go about our lives using vision as our primary sense. But when it comes to the marsh tit or the willow tit, they use sound. Sound's a much more important sense to them. Especially when it comes to choosing between mates, because otherwise they'd keep getting confused and mating with the wrong species. So they must be using sound much more than sight when it comes to choosing between mates. Now I'm really, really sorry it is really, really far away, but up there in the tree in the distance is a buzzard, our first bird of prey. And wow, a huge flock of goldfinches has just come in over my head. Now I actually used the wrong word there. The collective noun for a group of goldfinches is called a charm. A charm of goldfinches. But what I always find quite interesting with these groups is a group of long-tailed tits on the other side of the bank as well, which are equally sociable birds. But often in these flocks of long-tailed tits and goldfinches, you see other species joining in. Things like chaffinches and goldcrests. These birds are not normally as social as goldfinches and long-tailed tits, but they stick in the group for that extra protection. Okay, which must be quite weird really. That's like us going um, to the pub with a chimpanzee or a gorilla. <laughs> so very, very interesting, these gr interactions between different species. But obviously the main aim of all of that is safety in numbers. The larger the group you have, the more difficult it will be for something like a buzzard or a bird of prey like a sparrowhawk um, to pinpoint a single individual and kill it. So it's all about safety in numbers. It doesn't matter if you're the same species or not. If you're in a group, that's a good thing, especially in winter as well, because what things like long-tailed tits do is that they huddle together in the winter when they, you know, at, at night when they're coming into roost to gain that extra warmth. Wagtail again, it's amazing actually how riverbanks and the bushes around them attract so many birds. I've seen more species along the riverbank, I think, than they have um, in the woods, which is quite interesting. But yeah, the pied wagtail, it's quite easy to tell where it gets its name from. It's black and white and it wags its tail. And what's interesting is that we still don't really know why it does that, why it wags its tail. 
whether it's using it to keep balance or it's communicating in some what or to assess the water level because these are birds which you do normally find um, by water by riverbanks it's only till recently where they've ventured into our cities where they're quite popular there they form quite huge roosts in the winter time in city car parks and things